right, so first up, let's take a look at this Yanagisawa 7. You can see it's got the Yanagisawa sign here, and over here is the number 7. Seems like a really, a really well-crafted mouthpiece as far as craftsmanship goes. Take a look at the inside here, as you can see how open that is. Take a look at this inner triangle, see how much that opens up. Again, this is somewhere between a 95 and a 102. When I play it, I'll, uh, I'll give you a much closer idea of where I think this is. But you can see that there's not much more, there's not much going on as far as the forehead goes. It's a pretty open chamber. And you can see on the inside, like right in here, how that's kind of rounded out. And you can see here, this is very rounded. I would say that this mouthpiece has pretty standard size wide rails. Just like right here. Give you a look through the inside. And then from the back. You can see how square that looks. And that is our Yanagisawa. Before I move on though, if you look at it from this angle, like this, you can see how this front part right up in here, there's like a pretty nice angle change from this part to right here. So there's like a little tiny forehead that's right here that's very smoothed out. And that's the Yanagisawa. Limited by the reed, it's got four octaves there. I prefer to play this mouthpiece with a brighter reed, with a brighter setup. It gives it more of that kind of generic, bright tenor saxophone sound without sounding too much like somebody playing it. If I were to do a commercial or something and the advertisers wanted to really push the product and not the person playing the saxophone, they could get, you know, I would, I would use this mouthpiece because it really puts it more on the saxophone and less on the player. That's the impression that I get. <laughs>
little bit dull, but you do very well with this mouthpiece. <laughs> Thank you. 